All right, good morning, day two, April 2nd. Not in a T-Rex costume today with our little T-Rex arms, but um, we're gonna lie down the cycle today. So I am sitting on my right butt cheek because my left, I hurt my leg over the weekend and um, went to physical therapist yesterday and gave me some instructions on what I can do and what I can't do. And I cannot sit down and cycle right now. I can't actually put any weight on my left butt cheek. So, oh, this is, um, anyway, we can lie down and cycle. And um, prime, so we're gonna kind of work through this throughout this April challenge, but lying down cycling is a big one for us, okay? So now I'm kind of patient slash customer of our own product, which is why we created this, okay? So, so excuse me if I'm moving slow, but it actually fits into this. So we're gonna do this cycle leg blast. Okay, if you go under the workout tab, we're gonna do cycle leg blast. We are gonna warm up, okay? So, let me see if I got this. All right, this lying down position. So for me, what I'm going to do is just small motions, okay? I tore my left hamstring and um, also managed to strain my glute. And so I'm just gonna do small motions. And then when I go in a full rotation, I have to use my healthy leg to push through the other one. Okay, and so pedaling forward tends to grab that glute and that hamstring more. So I'm gonna primarily focus on pedaling backwards. And um, I think I need to, sorry. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do today. And then I have my band here where I can incorporate upper body, but I'm gonna go nice and slow. And this is something that you can do in bed Okay, and it really fits into this, you know, April is this anti-sedentary month that we're doing. And sometimes when we have an injury, that is actually when we gain weight. I hear so often from people, you know, that they got hurt, they had a total knee replacement, they had a hip replacement, broke their leg, you know, and then next thing you know, months go by and then 30 pounds goes by. So we're gonna stay active, right, during an injury. I'm gonna use my arms, but I'm gonna go nice and slow. Now, an interesting thing for me, I had I broke this leg, gosh, now is it what four years ago? And if I it's longer, it was misset, so it's crooked. And it, if I don't cycle, my hip really is impacted and starts to hurt, and my ankle too. So, like right now, I'm doing this to keep in motion and that motion is lotion for the joint, I'm doing that, okay? So let's work through our starting temperature here. Now, I have to do something, sorry. <laughs> you can see I'm a little gimpy. I'm gonna pull this forward a little bit. And now let's see if I can get back. All right. So I can do a lot of things with this leg, but anything that involves moving forward, um, like bending down and picking things up is just a pain in the butt. All right, so let's start this. Okay, so. All right, we're gonna start out oh. here in yellow. We are in a. All right, it's 6 a.m. We're doing this in the morning. I'm not gonna do this every day at 6 a.m. Um, just if I'm up and I kind of feel like doing it, then that's when we're gonna do it. But I do notice pedaling in reverse right, really makes it easier for me with this hamstring and glute issue. I will not be able to sit in a chair and pedal XD probably this whole month. We'll see how this goes. But um, again, you can do this lying down in bed and we're starting out easy. And when we get into that red zone, I'm not, I'm really just kind of using this as a guide and also for you. Like if you can hammer this out, hammer this out. This is one of my favorite positions and um, I love this one. You know, you can get your butt up and really focus on those glutes. We will not be trying that today, okay? But let's see here. Oh, let me get my... So my heart rate is going to be, like today, I will likely do a much more aggressive upper body workout. I'm just gonna pick the indoor cycle workout on the Apple Watch. And by incorporating my arms, into this, 
right, and stretching. Now I'm pulling that from my trunk and I'm pulling, right, my core through these movements and strengthening my arms, okay? But I'm just gonna go nice and easy. And I, you know, I like to incorporate arms to practically everything I do. Because again, we live in these little T-Rex zones of our keyboard, right? And our cars and everything. So it's nice to get them outside of that range. Even stretching up above, you know, anything that you can do to move your arms. Now I'm gonna try forward. I can go slow, okay? But see this point right here? That is actually where you need to grab the pedal, pull it to you. That's not something I can do with this torn hamstring here, partially tear, it, oh, but um, so that's why I'm gonna keep going reverse. I need to let it heal. And so it's really important that I not push it right now, you know, while I'm healing. And uh, it takes about two weeks to build up some scar tissue. And I, I have to, no more sprinting. So the reason I did this is I was out shagging balls with my son um, for my son's team. It was the first time the coach has ever asked us to do that. And of course, my mind takes into this 20 year old who can catch balls. And it was like the perfect ball, right? Where you could just make this wonderful catch. And I didn't even make the catch, but if I had a longer glove, if I had an outfielder glove, I would have caught that ball. But I had this tiny little baseball glove. Anyway. I have to stop doing this. About two years ago, for anybody who's been with us for a while, I actually tore my right hamstring and I was racing my son, trying to prove to him that I could still beat him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, not only did I not beat him, but that I tore my hamstring. But that one, I was actually warmed up. You know, we had been running, we had warmed up, I had stretched, you know, but I still pushed myself a little too much. So this right here in reverse feels great. I feel like I could do this for a long period of time. So don't forget that we go in reverse, okay, and forward. So like um, you're using a whole different set of muscles and you can focus right on these back and forth motions, okay? And so I'm not going to be able to get to this red zone. The more you do it if you can. Uh, but back and forth motions, okay? And then full range of motion. Tightening your core. And again, I'm just trying to get motion as lotion for my joints right now. Like I'm not trying to get my heart rate up. You know, my heart rate is 83. Like this is not where I'm going to get my cardio today. But what I am going to get is my joints moving. And with this injury, for me and my body, if I don't move, I hurt. So that's what we're doing. Oh, I live, sometimes living the XC lifestyle means like I'm, I'm um, healthier and, and stronger and all these things, but it also is like this constant state of like I fell off my bike or, I was downhill mountain biking and went over the handlebars and hurt my shoulder and I worked through that. You know, I tore my right hamstring, worked through that. Now I've got my left one, worked through that. And uh, as we get older, you know, sometimes we live this kind of constant state of, of rehab and prehab. No more sprinting. That is like way over. So silly. Not for everybody, there's lots of 45 year old women who can sprint, but I'm not one of them. Okay. But this feels good on my leg. Now, watch if I simply add the arms, you know, my heart rate will jump up. Okay. So that way I can kind of double dip and make the most efficient use of this time with an injury. So let's try, I'm gonna do these small motions. I'm gonna do that. Now, what I'm doing is I'm using this leg to guide that leg, okay? Getting the motion going. 
and, and back in reverse. But I can stand on XE. So this is what, it's quad work, right? I'm okay with quad work. Like pushing in reverse like this is really, it's just quads, okay? I'm using quads. If I come up in a pelvic tilt, I will get, you know, get my butt off the ground and I'm working more glute. And if I'm pedaling forward, I'm working more hamstring and glute too. But in reverse, it's just a different set of the muscles. So I love reverse. All right, how are we doing on time here? <clears throat> so, you know, we're trying to do 150, 75 minutes to 150 minutes of vigorous. And I, that's usually my go-to. I, I bang these out in 20 minutes and I go hard. That's not gonna happen this month as much. So I'm gonna have to do longer duration, which I'm not so great at. I'd rather just hammer it out and be done with it. I'm a huge fan of interval training. But here's what I'm going to do, right? What I'm not going to do, I'm not gonna get weaker while I have this injury. So that bumped my heart rate up there to 98, okay? Like, this is about as fast as I can go. <laughs> Again, you can do this in a bed, okay? Now, in a bed, lying all the way flat, you wanna be in a semi-recumbent position, putting your back up just a little bit up against your headboard, you know, stuffing some pillows behind you, get comfortable. And then you have the keeper that I'm lying on, and that allows, prevents it from scooting. So lay this out in bed, you know, put some pillows behind you. And uh, we'll be seeing this position a lot this month because I can do this one. Thank goodness. I know one consistent theme I see with our customers is this, we're just trying to find something that works for us, okay? And so often it is an injury, you know, a health condition, a disability, that is this major barrier to exercise. And they want to exercise. I want to exercise, you know, at home, convenient, in my own schedule, but we eliminate the barrier, okay? So if you're bedridden and you can use your legs, XC is wonderful, we're in ICUs, we're in hospitals, you know, and it really is just that commitment to being less sedentary, which I'm less sedentary right now, right? Than I would be if um, I just kind of like, ah, you know, I'm not gonna exercise today. My joints lock up, I have to. It hurts more to not exercise than to exercise for me. Sometimes I'll get caught up and I will mostly do arms. And next thing you know, my hip is like killing me. I'm trying to figure out what the heck's going on with my hip. And it's because I haven't cycled. So <laughs> I say, I gotta get these hips moving. All right. So, no, I'm not doing any stretching. Everybody's different. If you, if Somebody sees this and they have the torn ACL and they're gonna, I mean a torn, knock on wood, uh, a torn hamstring and they're gonna work through this. You have to work with your PT. There's so many fine muscles in there and uh, you really have to work with your PT to figure out what works for you. But pedaling in reverse works for me. Okay, if I go super easy resistance. Oh, see that was too easy. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I can't do that. Okay, so listen to your body, but I can do reverse. It's kind of, you know, sometimes I think God humbles us in some way. I'm getting hurt here, so I remind myself to do these small motions, exercises with the, all of our customers who live with an injury, disability, or health condition. So if you've noticed when I put the resistance super easy right there, then I really have to use this healthy leg to balance it out. 
Because when you have no resistance, right, the pedals, it's like a bike. You have to get on, you have to pedal it. But with no resistance, you really have to balance out both legs and the pressure that you're putting on the pedal. So too little, if it was too easy right there, it made my healthy leg have to work harder, okay? And I mean, we can do that, but I don't need to push it. I just need to be moving and, you know, we'll be healthy here in, in about six weeks. But, um, all right, so my heart rate's down to, one, uh, down to 88. I'm squeezing in this 15 minute workout. Later on today, I will stand on XE throughout the day. It's my favorite way to take breaks at work at the office. You know, just like if I've been sitting for, they want us moving every half an hour. I, I mean, maybe standing up, I think you can absolutely move in half an hour, but I like to go about an hour, hour and a half, work, focus on my work, and then take a quick intense break, okay, where I get my heart rate up at least like 120, 130, which I can do by standing on it. So most of my exercise breaks during the day will be standing on it, sometimes during a conference call, you know, if I'm on a call and it's not a video call, <laughs> like then I'll cycle my legs while sitting in a chair. But through this month, I can't sit in a chair. Um, let's see, I don't know how long this is gonna last. We'll see. But sitting in a chair hurts. So I will not be pedaling XC from a chair very anytime soon. Uh, how are we doing? We got two more minutes. Okay. So socks with dog hair on them. I like socks, okay? Our feet are in shoes all day. Barefoot, even better, okay? I like socks, but if we can get your toes kind of wrapped around the pedals and incorporated into the workout. You know, we um, interviewed Carl Sterling for Parkinson's disease, and he reinforced some messaging like, of, hey, our feet, right, and barefoot fitness, even with socks on, Right? By touching the bottom of our feet on the pedals, we're really touching all those wonderful nerves and waking them up and incorporating the foot into the routine. So if you can, pedal barefoot right, or with socks on. It, it's, um, it just, you'll, you'll, you'll actually be really surprised at how good that feels to do. And sometimes in the beginning, it might feel a little bit challenging, but that we need to work on the, the fitness of the foot to make that easier, okay? Almost done. The tricks, the trick with this, okay? My heart rate, 92, okay? I never got it above 100, right? And then you might feel like that wasn't worth the time because I didn't do anything it's better than your resting heart rate, okay? So I'm actually, you even don't, like a lot of times we're so hard on ourselves that if we can only do these small movements, like what's the point? And they add up, they add up, like this adds up for my joints, for my knee, for my hip, for my ankles, okay? And it's definitely better than my resting heart rate, right? Because So at least I did get it elevated. Um, you know, you can do arms from this position, you can put arm weights in and all kinds of things. But with this torn, I didn't want to have to bend a lot and twist with until I get a little bit healthier. But don't feel like it's not worth it, right? This is being less sedentary. And you can do this in bed. And if you have pots, this is wonderful for pops. Okay, nice and slow. Now, if you'll notice, I'm a little closer than I would normally be. And that is to shorten this muscle that I'm working on. All right, we're done. So let me turn this one off. And my heart rate, my highest rate was so 83 to 100. Okay, again better than my resting heart rate. Got it up. Oh, and I can't, let's see if I can see. My, all right, 10 is at 102. I'm gonna save that. Save, now this is gonna be interesting. So 
like I'll do this workout again in a month and you know a few days or whatever and then we'll see if I can go a little bit get it up a little bit but maybe I don't I'm at home I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say healthier and less stressed because I did get some movement all right we'll see you tomorrow day three have a wonderful day and uh, actually you'll probably see me today I'll do a couple live things like me standing from my desk. Alrighty, have a wonderful day.